promise, Tiger. I promise. I'll tell the exchange. You tell everybody. Listen to me, Hatcher. You gotta tell them. Silent Green is people. We gotta stop them somehow. Welcome to week four, and what a way to start with the 1973 Soylent Green film, where the climax, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, is that Soylent Green is people. The food has become people, the source material for the food. It's dystopian, it's a great story, and like every good or great story, there's a little grain of truth there that makes it just believable enough that we think this is forecastable in the future, that this could be. And we are left watching the movie and thinking, how far in the future before this feels plausible, maybe progresses to possible, or even progresses to seem likely. And if you haven't seen the film, sort of the underlying current of this is overpopulation. As we move into the future, it does not become feasible to have land for people to live on and have land for farming and making food. And so slowly, the food becomes the people, uh, sort of a cycle of overpopulation and consuming that abundant resource of people. And for our purposes, it seems a little, bit, a little bit of an odd place to have our discussion in week four. But what we're talking about here is the consumer model and how the consumer model relies on, and more than relies on, is totally dependent upon this system, this industrial complex, if you will, where food is made for the people. We may be able to grow a little bit of our food, but not enough to sustain our you know, full meals or a year's worth of food, for example. We're not self-sustaining. So uh, we as consumers, we as public rely on our food to be made, and we built an economic system out of this, not just in food, but in other areas where if food is not made for us, that whole sector of the economy is lost and the ramifications that could flow from that. And so there is this disparity where there is more power, maybe more uh, information from manufacturers and suppliers than there is for consumers. And we're going to talk about that in the audio lecture. But the overarching goal, like we continued from the previous lecture, is how do we peel back this veil of secrecy? And not only how do we peel it back and look to see how that is made or how it's labeled, but how do we go beyond the basics? And the basics being food that's safe to eat, food that's wholesome to eat, and food that's labeled correctly. So if we have an allergen or an observation, like a religious observation, that we know that's accurate. How do we go beyond that to something more important than minimum safety, things like consumer welfare? Since we're dependent on this system, it would seem important that we do more than the minimum safety, and that our regulatory approach, our regulatory life cycle, addresses some of these issues as well. And we're going to get into those issues, and we're going to get into that discussion in the audio lecture, and I'll join you there.